I was really taken with the film The Girl with All the Gifts. I love zombie movies. I know that's fashionable to say, but as someone who's literally written zombie books, I think I'm a little more obsessed with zombies than the average fan. I was really surprised by The Girl with All the Gifts and how they presented some of the zombie issues, and I really loved Melanie. I will only be looking at the movie version here because I just found out there was a book like two minutes ago and I haven't had the pleasure of reading it, but that aside, I couldn't shake the feeling that this plot was directly connected to The Last of Us. This is your one and only spoiler warning for everything. To do a brief recap of The Girl with All the Gifts, we are in the midst of a zombie apocalypse, except that, like all of these movies, no one has ever heard the word zombie before, so they use the term hungries instead. In this universe, the remainder of mankind seems to be locked down on secure military bases, and the movie takes place on such a base in the UK, where they're studying the second generation of hungries, which are children who were close to birth in utero when their mother got infected with the fungus fungus that causes the zombie condition. I will say this wrong, I'm sure, but the fungus is called Orpheo Cordyceps unilateralis, and it's actually a real thing in the insect world, but in this scenario, it's inexplicably jumped to the human realm in The Girl with All the Gifts. Now, the interesting thing about the second gen hungries is that they keep a normal level of intelligence for their age, but they still have zombie-like impulses to eat other people. As you can imagine, that makes for a highly dangerous dangerous hybrid monster. Orpheo cordyceps unilateralis is typically found in tropical climates, meaning unless researchers in the UK were screwing around and accidentally let something loose, Europe cannot be ground zero for the apocalypse and the fungi has just rapidly taken over one person after another over the past 20 years. The look of these zombies immediately made me think of the infected in the game The Last of Us. I mean, the clickers turning into these mushroom-headed freaks of nature really felt in tune with the girl with all the gifts. In fact, when comparing The Last of Us with The Girl with All the Gifts, we have basically the exact same story. Both stories take place 20 years after a cordyceps fungal outbreak has zombified most of humanity, and after a zombie's body naturally gives out, the fungus continues to produce spores that can infect humans. In The Girl with All the Gifts, Melanie is hungry, and if she allows scientists to kill her and use her brain, they can make a vaccine to save mankind from zombies. In The Last of Us, Ellie is a human who has been bitten by an infected, but proves to be immune to the fungus, which also means that killing Ellie can generate a cure to save the human race. What a coincidence! And in both of these plots, the fungus ultimately wins, because neither Ellie nor Melanie become a sacrificial lamb. Really, the only difference here is that Ellie wanted to die to save everyone else, and Melanie decided that her kind, the second generation Hungries, were meant to take over over the world as the new dominant race. So are these two plots in the same universe? Well, I imagine it's almost impossible for them not to be. Except we do have a few differences between the zombies, so let's see if we can reconcile them. In The Girl with All the Gifts, we're shown that if multiple hungries all die near one another, the fungus grows out of them like vines and grows pods full of spores. I don't recall seeing pods in The Last of Us game, but the clickers, in my opinion, often appear to be decomposing and releasing spores while actively moving around. Those are really different methods of reproduction within a host, but Cordyceps has roughly 400 species of fungi under its umbrella, which means different continents may be dealing with different types of fungi. The real issue we're dealing with then is not whether the fungus can move from continent to continent, but how quickly does the fungus evolve and change through its host. We have no idea how fast fast the fungi is evolving and adapting to different environments, but with how fast the zombieism spread, the cordyceps seem like they were ready to adapt. So maybe The Last of Us being set in Texas, whereas The Girl with All the Gifts is set in the UK, is enough geographic distance so that the cordyceps have mutated to function a little differently over the past 20 years. In The Girl with All the Gifts, we're told that the spore pods are just a bad design that are way too hard to open, but the pods actually 
burst open when exposed to extreme heat. In my opinion, that suggests that this species of fungi has not adapted enough from its tropical origin to thrive in the most effective way possible. Whereas in The Last of Us, the fungus has evolved to just decompose a fully deceased infected person and then eventually start releasing spores in that spot to infect whoever else goes by. So the US version of the fungi has found a way to keep reproducing even after the host body is given out. It's created a better adaptation to reach more humans. If the two franchises really do cross over, as I suspect, I would bet that the UK species of cordyceps will win out because Melanie purposefully released those toxins, which will allow the fungus to allegedly take over the world. Had that not occurred, the US version of the fungi would have logically become the more dominant species over time. Now, the largest difference between the two franchises is the idea of second generation hungries. They absolutely don't exist in The Last of Us but we could explain that in a few different ways. One possibility is that the UK cordyceps adapted to become symbiotic with fetuses. We see that most of the second generation kids are all around age 10. Since the apocalypse occurred 20 years ago, there should be second generation adults to study, but there aren't. And while Dr. Caldwell explains that they captured these kids by chance, we see more of the second gen kids, all roughly 10 years old or younger, that are feral in the streets. So this suggests that around 10 years ago, that species of cordyceps recoded its genetic material to attempt to thrive in different ways, making second generation hungries a recent development and further supporting the idea that the girl with all the gifts is in the same timeline as The Last of Us. In The Last of Us, we see that the infected are decaying and turning into clickers much faster than the zombies we see in The Girl with All the Gifts. Again, this may help prove that the apocalypse started it is one cordyceps outbreak, but geographic barriers changed how the fungi developed. Seeing a faster decay rate for the infected in The Last of Us means that the goal of that species of cordyceps was a quicker reproduction method. In these universes, the United States seems more populated with healthy humans when compared to the UK, and that is explainable if the fungi evolved and made different reproductive stages in different locations and climates. Then, as a response to that change in their environment, humans are starting to adapt an immunity to the fungi, which is what we see with Ellie. And it's not too far from what we see with Melanie, except her system has formed a kind of treaty with the cordyceps so that they can both survive. I don't know, have I convinced you yet that the girl with all the gifts and The Last of Us are happening in tandem? Or are the differences between their apocalypse scenarios still too vast? Yeah, I might be overthinking it, but that is literally my job. Well, that's all I have for now, but this video's not quite over yet. We're expanding, so I have to plug our other channels. Total, we have The Fangirl, dealing primarily with movies and shows, Say Halo Goodbye Gaming, and The Family Family Vlogs. Links are in the description, and we would love to see you at all three channels. Okay, I think that's it. So thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed enough to like, subscribe, and share this video. We have tons of material across our various channels that you are fully encouraged to go check out. And if somehow you can't get enough of me, please connect with me on Instagram at Say Halo Goodbye or Twitter at the underscore fanily.